Hi everyone and welcome back to NodeFlow. Today we'll create together a realistic Minecraft block, complete with a grass simulation on the top and a procedural dirt texture for the sides of the cube. So I've divided this video in four parts to make it easier to follow for you. Uh, in the first one, we'll make the cube uh, with some noises to create the dirt texture. In the second one, we'll create the grass geometry with a vellum simulation uh, based on the hair constraints. In the third one, we'll start setting up a camera and a backdrop to present our final work. And in the fourth one, it's all about rendering. So moving everything to Solaris, lighting, and finally rendering everything into a beautiful animation. This is a follow up to the new balloon series that I am creating for the channel. So if you haven't, check it out and let me know what you think. It will be great as an introduction to Vellum if you are not used to create simulations in Houdini. Um, so without further ado, let's fire up Houdini and let's start. I will start creating a geonode and then I will name it dirt block. I will copy this name as usual and press Ctrl S to save and I will replace this name with dirt block. And inside, let's start creating a cube. The Minecraft block is one meter by one meter, so we will change the size to 0.9 to make some space for the for the grass. Then I will change the axis division to something very high, everything to 300. And let's start creating a attribute block to create the actual noise on top. Uh, this is one of the most important parts for the creation of the cube, maybe the most important one, as if as it will decide all the uh, look of the dirt. Let's create a turbulent noise. It's very useful to plug this noise into the color just because of visualizing it. So I will change this one to a frequency of 11. I will copy this value and with tab I will paste. And and I will then create a displacement along normal and just to see what's going on I will take the position here and I will hold alt to actually make it a little bit more organized and I will fit the noise into the amount and then the position into the position. Of course it's way too strong but we can change this parameter to something very low. We don't need it to be too strong and after we have this base we're actually interested in getting some color too out of it. Right now we're just plugging the color as it is but we want to create a ramp and to connect it to the uh, turbulent noise, name it dirt. Because it's a parameter, it's just easy to remember that everything is lowercase. Then I'll create another one for the uh, rocks. Because these are parameters, we need to change uh, these ones. And actually, we won't be able to see them. Let me just plug it in for a moment. And here, you see if I change it, Yes, I should be able to see the changes here. But what I'm interested in is double clicking here. A little trick that I find extremely useful, it's going here and using this Minecraft block here. Of course, it doesn't come with Udini. The idea is that you can sample some colors from some image just inside of Udini. So you click on this one and then you click here and you can add a file that you have on your PC. Or if you don't want to download it, make sure to open the image in Chrome and then you can just plug a link and that will work. Dragging our cursor over here, and start adding some values. I will start with something that's dark. And on this one, I will do the same, but this time on something that's way brighter. Yeah, I think I like the shades that we're getting. We can always tweak them later. So for now, I think I will leave it here. I will just move this one a little bit back. So I have, yeah, something like that. On the rocks, let's actually see the rocks. We need to create a mask for the rocks to show up. So I will duplicate this noise but I will hold Ctrl, Shift and Alt. So that will create me a perfect copy. That means that if I change these ones, this one will change too. Let's try just for sake of trying. 12, this one is 12. The only thing we will change here uh, by holding Ctrl, Shift and clicking uh, on the offset. So we disconnect these parameters, we can change them manually. You want to move this one to something like 0 0.8 because I found that that value was helpful for me. This will be useful because now we'll create a fit. Fit range is used to remap a noise. So if I connect it to the color again, we want to change the uh, source minimum to something like 0.25. So we start seeing something that looks like the rocks. And we want to say change the source maximum to something lower so the white gets stronger. A little bit less, let's do 55. Yeah, something like that looks fine to me. And then we want to create a node called mix. So the mix is like a sort of like a blend. We can blend between two different colors based on a bias that now we have this one as a mask, and then plug the color into the color. Doesn't look that great because we are plugging it in the color, but we're not plugging it into the height. So by moving this displacement a little bit up so we have more space, so I'll create an add node. We'll get the combined, the actual sum of these two, the rocks and the dirt height. And by plugging it into the amount, we'll see the rocks will a little bit explode. So we need to add another fit between the add. So I will create another fit. So I will just change the uh, destination maximum to something like 0. Point something. Let's see. I think 0. 0.6. 
looks fine. Also, don't forget that these are not the colors of the rocks. Right now, we are just using a simple ramp that we have here. So we should go out and actually add some colors to this. And now you have your dirt block. Um, and you can play with the parameters that we discussed inside to so make something that looks a little bit different. When you're happy, we can proceed with the uh, rest of the tutorial. So I will create a group and I will call it top face. And because I want to isolate the top face, you see if I connect it to the actual block and then I disable this group and I keep by normal only on the Y axis, you see it's selecting only the top part, although there are some slopes that of course are not being selected. To get a clean selection, I will do this process on the cube first. And so we have this group already done. So what we need is just a group transfer. As the name implies, it requires here geometry to transfer the group to, and we are transferring this group here. You see it's already working by default, and it's clean, just a clean selection that we have here. We don't even need to change anything here, we already have this group clean. By using a blast, we can connect it, and we want to blast the primitive selection that we have, and then delete non-selected. So we only have the upper patch as we want it from the start. So I will create some node for the sake of being organized. So let's create another one too. I will create another node and I will call it out block to connect it here. So we have our complete block, complete block and also we have our isolated top. Um, so we can proceed by creating an hair gem. This is a node from the grooming suit Aridini. It's usually used for grooming. We can change this density parameter to 3000. Go in here and remove this attribute. We don't need them. Then I will create the guide process set length and I will create a guide process band. In this one I want to randomize the uh, length uh, something like 0 0.06 and then into the uh, guide process band I want to bend uh, in the root direction it's already preset for us in angle something like 19 random angle 18 and a lower randomness bias so they still maintain more or less the same position they're just slightly altered so having this one as the base of our uh, grass patch is already looking pretty decent we can continue to add a resample we don't need to resample although this resample node is also useful to create as a curve view attribute so i will disable the resample function and when i will click here to extract a curve view we can visualize it here by plugging it a color and setting it by ramp from attribute this is just a way to visualize the curve view and in the attribute select the curve view it's a ramp from these beginning points of the curve to the end point so you see it's pretty useful to make some nice coloring effect and very important attribute to use with the curves i will leave it in and i will create a group expression this is because we're going to fit this in a vellum simulation and we want to group the first point of the primitive. So I will click here and first point of primitive and then we'll change the group to point. I will rename this group root and this will be my beam group into the vellum simulation. If you don't know what I'm talking about, again, refer to the video that I made on the channel regarding vellum. Then I'll create a connectivity because I also want to use a, an attribute that differentiate every single one of these, stuff like that. So I can use it to change uh, the way the wind interacts with each one of them. And then I will create a vellum hair. At this stage, we are setting up the constraints for our simulation. I will mostly leave everything at default, although I think I will change the, the bend stiffness so they will bend a little bit less. I will create a vellum solver. And holding J, I will connect everything together. I want to disable my wind because I will create my wind inside. So in the forces, I will disable the built-in wind. I will add a slight velocity damping, constraint iteration to 150. I will change the smoothing iteration to 15. Let's play this one so we can get a hint of what it's looking like. So and they are just falling down because we forget to actually add the pinpoint group that we created by adding the root. Press and play again. You see they are just moving and they are bending like they should. That's why I put the bend to that value. So in the solver is where we can play a little bit more. So I will add the pop wind and because I want to put like random values for each single strand, I will use vex to change the velocity and the air resistance. Let's start by changing the air velocity by writing wind. It's equal to itself multiplied by n random plus. It will create very weird values with this. So I will just fit this one and I will fit a one between 0 0.15 and one and then i want to change the air resist basically the same thing and map it this time to 0 0.25 and to one it looks a little bit complicated but what we're actually doing we're randomizing how the wind velocity parameter and the air resistance parameter interacts with every single strand of grass uh, to differentiate every single strand of grass we're using the class attribute that is being generated from the connectivity node 
and then we are uh, remapping this attribute from a range between 0 0.15 to 1 or 0 0.25 to 1. I'm changing the amplitude to 2 and I'm changing the word size to 3.5 um, then I will change the pulse length to 0 0.75 and I want to randomize the amplitude based again on the class attribute so I will just take this one and I will copy it and pasted it but instead of doing that one i want to change the amplitude and this was probably the most complicated part of the tutorial thank you for sticking by but now we have a win that actually interacts in a very sick way so before i go out of the balloon solver let me actually put a parenthesis over here that i forgot and let me put 2.8 into the x direction so we have a starting wind velocity in the x and it should be fine so let's go out and let's press play and you can see how this noise is way more interesting than a simple pop noise and everyone every one of these strands moves a little bit different with different amplitude, different velocities, and so on. Next, let's create some colors around from attribute, and I will select my curve view. And then I, instead of this one, I will, of course, I will change it to like a green, but like a darker value. And then this one will be a lighter value. Okay, for now, something like that looks fine to me. I will create a poly wire. Now the radius will be huge. First of all, I don't want to calculate the vertex textures. I will create an attribute wrangle here. So we want to manipulate the width attributes. So I will write at width is multiplied equal to a random of the attribute class multiplied by a seed that we can define all enclosed in parentheses. So the random will be calculated for all of this. And then because this will give random results as the function implies, I will just write a fit function to fit it to some specific values that I want to. And here I will put comma and I will create two other channels, a channel float called minimum width and then other channel float called maximum let's close another time so we can close the fit function and semicolon and let's see if this one is correct so here we have all these controls so to check if this is working i will copy this value here this attribute and i will paste into the polywire radius and it should disappear because the minimum width is zero but once we increase it and we increase the maximum too you see we have a control on how it should be let's play with the values until we have something nice so these are the values I ended up using. Lastly, I will add the normal node, just to make sure the normals are calculated correctly. Beautiful. Now we can finally see everything together. So let's create an object merge and a node. In all, I want to output my grass. I want to make it black. And then I will drag and drop into the object. So here we have our grass. I will duplicate this object merge. And now inside of this, I want to import my block. I'll put it like that. And then I will create a merge. No. So here we have our first iteration of the Minecraft block. Now we need to do a little upress to all of this. So I will duplicate this one and I will name it dirt block. So now it's time to high res our scene. So I will set my scene to manual. I will change my axis division to 500 and I will also increase the hair gen density to 10,000. And lastly, because this one, this blast, it's not blasting the correct ones right now if i update it we can just write top phrase now that we have everything set up with our resolution increased let's preview the result okay amazing it looks way better now the last step is to cache this out so let's create a file cache let's actually also create an attribute delete i will connect my null here and my file cache here in the attribute delete i will select delete non selected and I will keep my point color and now the file cache should be not so heavy so I will change my limit here to 100 for now and I will save to disk so now that I have cached out my simulation I can click here to visualize the whole cube and because the playback was still a little bit slow for me I actually created a flipbook that we can pre visualize here and as you can see the grass is moving in a pretty interesting way and now we just have to set a little bit of a background and prepare our scene to render. I will start creating a grid. I will make it 15 by 20 and I want to increase my rows to 30. I need my resolution on one axis because that will be the axis where I will bend. So I will bend like this. And then as you may have guessed, we need the bend node. We need to set the bend angle to 90 and it's already working pretty decently, but we want to change a little bit the angle here. So I will change the capture origin to minus 2.25 on the, on the z-axis and then I will just change the capture length to something like 6. And we can play with this value to see how big of a bevel you want. Lastly, I will create a transform and I will move it a little bit back so I'll make sure that my cube is more or less in the center because if we template it now, you can see it's behind. So let's use this transform to transform it by 6 on the z-axis, minus 0.45. So we have our cube 
lining perfectly. Now let's connect everything together. I will move my backdrop here. I'll create a new, making it black and actually calling it out BG connecting. I will merge my background and my dirt block over here. And we have a complete scene. So something fun that I would like to try before rendering is to use a copy to point. I will create a grid and I will scatter my blocks to the points of the grid. I want the grid to be a 9 by 9. I will plug it in into the second input and in the first input I'll plug this one. But before doing it, I will actually check back an instance. Otherwise everything will explode based on our resolution. With back an instance it will be very quick. First of all, I have an error here because I'm actually also using the background. I only want to use the block. And also they are reversed on one axis. So let me just create a transform. Because the copy to points expect them to be in a particular orientation, I will just change the rotate X to 90. And here we have it. If you were wondering of this because of this visualization, this is made for uh optimization sake for the viewport. So everything is going on, everything is perfect, but we have just a way to make our viewport smoother because we have lots of polygons. And as you can see, we have something that resembles a realistic Minecraft world. So yeah, I just wanted to show you this. Ideally, you can also try to render all of this. But for now, for the sake of the tutorial, we'll just render our simple animation of just one cube. So I will create this one. I will connect it here and I'm going to name it out complete. And then we can create a lock net and go to render. So in Solaris, it will be extremely useful to create a scene import all but we need to select this one so by visualizing this and entering solaris we can create a scene import all it will just brute force import everything that you have selected i will just deselect this grid so i can see my cube better i will create a camera i will connect it visualize it and drag it in the viewport so i will be in the camera right now i will lock it by clicking here and i will start framing my cube although i want a, a, a less wide uh, lens so i will go into the view Set the focal length to something like 200. Let's go far. Before rendering, we need some lights. So I will add the Karma Physical Sky. I will set the solar altitude to something like 52 and my azimuth to 108. And the angular size will determine how blurry our shadow is. A wider, a bigger angular size will result like in blurrier shadow. Because I wanted a very harsh look, I prefer to use a, something like 0 0.186. And I think I have everything, I just want to add more intensity here. And we can start rendering. By disabling our light visualization here, we will have a better view of what's going on and I will also disable the grid. Okay, now that we have an idea of what's going on, I actually quite like the result. I will add the Karma render settings. So here is where you can set some more advanced uh, settings for your render. So for now, I will just set this resolution on manual and I will change it to 1920 by 1080. I will choose the XPU. So we don't, we want to disable uh, depth of field and motion blur because our object is moving and we also don't want to have a blurry background. But this render, this will make the render a little bit faster. But because we are not doing a proper shading for this video, not yet, we're not assigning a proper material. For now, I think it will be fine uh, leaving everything like this. So in order to render a, an animation, we need to create a new SD render rock, plug into the camera render settings and change it from render current frame to render specific frame range. In this case, we want to render from zero to 100. Let's control click here so we can delete the expression and let's select again Karma X view and it should be fine. We can press render to disk and that will work. The way where you specify the output uh, it's actually here into the output picture. So let's export our animation. So here's the final animation. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I will see you in the next one.